Hi again everyone, and a big thank you to our guests, Windstriker and Lightning Stripe, for joining us this evening. This one's a continuation of a previous video, exploring what events led to the dividing of equestrian society. To summarise what we currently know, shortly following the end of G4, a mayor believed to be Queen Opaline spread a magical supremacist worldview to whoever would listen to her. Her rhetoric proved terrifyingly virulent, with Equestria quickly becoming divided along racial lines. Such ideas, it seems, were deliberately spread by Opaline with the end goal of stealing all Equestrian magic, something she continues to feel entitled to. Despite many moves of conflict, Opaline's plans failed when Twilight in the Main Six created the Free Crystals of Unity, banishing the Mad Queen and cloaking the whole country with a massive Invisibubble. With magic now under control and the source of all propaganda now banished, peace did return to Equestria. Unfortunately, the damage was done. The three tribes eventually separated, forming what would become Zephyr Heights, Bridalwood, and Maritime Bay, taking their crystals with them. Many moons following the creation of the crystals, magic itself had ceased to function. This is what we know for sure, yet some questions remain. How did Opaline manage to incite such widespread division? Why did the Windigos not sufficiently interfere? And why did Twilight's plan to repair Equestria seemingly fail? As far as we can tell, Opaline began her plans by causing trouble in Ponyville, behaving in accordance with her beliefs and drawing attention to herself while doing so. Not only does this allow her views to spread through word of mouth, potentially reaching the ears of those who may already be open to such an idea, by committing to a behaviour for as long as possible, Opaline could gradually encourage others to imitate such behaviour, in a similar manner to peer pressure. Though in larger populations, this is much more difficult. According to research, it only takes 25% of a total population in order to change a majority opinion, though that's still a lot if your aim is to change society. Thus, Opaline would have had to have begun by only manipulating small groups or individuals at a time, similar to what she would later attempt with Sunny Star Scout in Ali Cond. The more ponies adopt her attitude towards magic, the easier it will become for such views to naturally spread and slowly become normalised. The belief that magic users are better than non-magic users is also fairly easy to internally rationalise. Not only does magic provide a significant advantage, but the most powerful magic users, the Alicorns, always seem to become royalty. So maybe having magic is better. The trick is to conflate descriptively better with prescriptively better. Having increased ability of your environment is technically better than the alternative, However, Opaline is approaching this from the assumption that magic users deserve special treatment for being better than anyone else. According to Discord's testimony, at least some ponies found Opaline compelling enough to spread her ideas further. With the increased dissemination of propaganda for a longer period of time, repetition bias slowly starts to set in, potentially turning a fringe worldview into a mainstream discussion. While most of this propaganda would be directed towards unicorns, if Opaline was an alicorn back then, she could have played the part of a pegasus, indoctrinating two groups at once. The more common it becomes for magic users to look down on non-magic users, the more resentment starts to grow. Given the resulting unrest was mostly targeted towards both unicorns and pegasi, it's also likely such behaviour may have gradually developed a disproportionate anti-magic backlash. As the opposition grew, even moderates would have distanced themselves from other races so as to avoid more interpersonal conflict. The Kirin, already vulnerable to the effects of anger, would either have to abandon these communities or stay and potentially risk inflaming the situation. Bothered by the changes, it wouldn't take long for other groups, such as Hippogriffs and Yaks, to leave as well. But things were about to get far worse. Much like Starlight's cloud of anger from All Bottled Up, the growing contempt may well have eventually boiled over and triggered the violent lightning storms we see in Discord's flashback. This would have likely led to further backlash against magic users, and the long-running accusation that unicorns and pegasi are inherently dangerous. These are all possible factors for how Opaline was able to reach so many ponies. Even so, how did it get as far as it did? 
Last time this happened, the Wendigos eventually made their appearance, forcing the ponies of Equestria to get their act together. No evidence of Wendigo involvement has so far emerged. So where were they? Sadly, we have even less information on this subject. During this card's version of the story, we saw huge thundercloud's which could indicate the presence of Hurricanthas, close relatives to the Wendigos that feed off of panic. But it could also be related to the events at the end of Make Your Mark Chapter 1. Either way, there's no evidence of Wendigos in Equestria as it currently is. There are a few reasons why. Considering the level of power that the elements of Harmony used in the ending of the end, Twilight might have been able to banish Wendigos from Equestria, though we can't be sure if said spell was temporary or permanent. The Wendigos also could have been stopped due to Twilight's Invisible Bubble spell. However, it appears that the spell was cast not far after the creation of the crystals, meaning a very long time would pass without any hints of the Wendigos, even though there was more than enough fighting to usually summon them. One of the most likely options is that Deathlet's appearance was caused by Opaline herself. Giant creatures flying around would suddenly have interrupted her plan, so it makes sense that she might have banished them herself, or maybe even wiped them all out. Either way, with the Wendigos out of the picture, there was nothing stopping Equestria from falling into a dark period of anger. Nothing, of course, except Twilight herself, who must have found out about Opaline and her plan, created the Unity Crystals and banished her, casting the Invisible Bubble to protect them. But that still leaves one final question. You see, after the banishment of Opaline, the creation of the Crystals and the construction of the Three Cities, Equestria was slowly mending itself. Zephyr Heights still has an airship hangar with tourism posters for Maritime Bay and Bridalwood, and a stained glass window celebrating the creation of the crystals. Those crystals were likely contained or intended to be contained within the Maritime Bay lighthouse, providing a beacon of friendship for all to see. Not to mention, as studies have demonstrated, regular exposure to a wide variety of different groups with different opinions can actually reduce prejudice and social bias over time. So by encouraging interactions and friendship between the three tribes, as far as I can tell, they were doing everything right. Yet, something still led to the final parting of the tribes, the separation of the crystals, and the end of magic for generations after. So what went wrong? Based on what we know, there are three possible culprits. The battle described by both Earth Ponies and Unicorns, the magic incident described by Sunny Star Scout, or the terrifying phenomenon seen in Make Your Mark Chapter 1. With the conflict still fresh in every pony's minds, all of these catalysts could have been the final straw. Unfortunately, unless the franchise actually gives us an answer, we may never know. The conclusions presented here are based on our current knowledge of the G4 and G5 eras at time of publication. Thus, it is likely there'll be future videos as further information is released. Once again, a big thank you to our guest speakers Windstriker and Lightning Strike for attending. You will find links to their channels in the description and comment section. To everyone else, a big thank you for joining us this evening, and I'm curious to know what you all think. Take care.